some people will just straight up say, look, I want to drop the weight and then I want to start exercise. But this is the one word of caution that I want to ask you. Are you emotionally prepared to add weight once you've reached your goal? Okay. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Now we know that um, getting into fat burn or getting into ketosis is the absence of glycogen being used as the main source of energy. So that's carbohydrates, right? So with every gram of uh, glycogen that's expended, we also lose three, about three quarters of a gram of water. So a lot of the initial inflammation that we lose is a result of us burning through the glycogen in our muscles. The only way to get the glycogen out of your muscle is to actually be active. So this is why some people, especially larger people, you have a six, five gentlemen who's on program can tap into fat burn literally clockwork like day two day three because of the amount of lean body mass and the amount of glycogen that's actually coming back in um, versus sometimes we have our shorter individuals who might take three four five sometimes seven to ten days to break into fat burn because they haven't utilized the glycogen especially if they're inactive so once we see that, we know somebody's in fat burn, right? I mean, how many times have we got that phone call? I'm in day three, I'm down three pounds and I feel amazing, right? And then sometimes you'll have that call on day four and they're like, you know, I'm not feeling it yet. What's going on? How much weight have you lost? Well, I've lost one pound. So that's usually a pretty good indicator that they haven't achieved fat burn at that point. So now we go over our period of time, whether this is six months or a year or whatever the case is for you to get to your, your ideal scale weight, and let's pretend that that's 150 pounds, okay? Your goal, your goal weight that you set for yourself and the number that you're focusing on every single day for six months to a year is 150, okay? And we hit that 150 mark and we say, yay, I'm finally gonna start to go into a, a program where I'm incorporating carbohydrates back in. And what we know about carbohydrates, again, with the glycogen, is that we're gonna immediately see a three to six pound increase because we bring glycogen back in, it's gonna, fill the muscle cells first, and then it's gonna add that water because the water is attached to that molecule. And we see that three pound increase. And then now all the emotional stuff starts happening. What did I do wrong? What's going on? What's the issue with this? this I, I must've screwed up. I must've ate the wrong food. I must, you know, maybe I have to go back on five and one. I'm not ready for this. But this is just a natural thing that happens. So what I tell my clients a lot of times is if this really is your, your true ideal weight at 150, Let's get down to 147 or 145 before we start incorporating back in to make sure that we don't have that shock element. Because if that's been a goal number for somebody for so long, it can be very disappointing when you see that number disappear the next day. And then we start to incorporate exercise. And had we, um, you know, if we started doing this, this, um, this uh, weight loss program without incorporating exercise, sometimes we'll have a loss of lean body mass as well. And once we start incorporating exercise to do the activities that we want to do, we're gonna see another anywhere from six to eight pound increase of lean body mass to reconstitute the body to do the activities that you're asking it to do. So that again, so now where, we're, where we ended is instead of 150, we're actually at 156. And if we were to do this at the same time that we lose the fat mass, we might find ourselves riding this wave right here. I don't know if you can see my cursor, I hope so. Um, straight across here, right? And uh, we might actually determine that once we get to 156, that you have that body that you've envisioned you wanting to have, and you're at a healthy weight, and you're feeling really great. There'd be no reason to drop down to that 150, because you're already at a healthy, healthy weight and a healthy musculature. Okay, so that's the point I want to make is that that's why that body composition right here might be right across here at 22%. It might be almost perfect for where you want to be there would be no reason to drop down below that had you done an exercise program at the same time. Now, going back to that, that uh, question is that, yes, your, your, weight, your scale weight's gonna be slowed down because if you drop 10 pounds, but you add two pounds of muscle, you only have an eight pound loss, right? So you're like, oh man, I should have, I should have been moving a little bit faster than this, but no, not if the muscle mass is increasing at the same time. So that's where that can be deceiving. And even though, again, you might see two to four, six inches coming off the waist, coming off the hips, all the areas that you wanted to get rid of, your clothes are fitting better. We've all experienced that. Even with a, a no change on the scale weight, all of a sudden we're like, whoa, I'm fitting into these pants a lot better, but my scale weight hasn't changed. What's going on with that? And that's losing that fat mass while maintaining or gaining lean body mass. Okay. So um, this...